Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Remember Charlie, who used to live around the corner? Poor fella. Always had a problem. He was forever trying to make square pegs fit into round holes. Nobody thought he'd do it. Then one day he did. He shoved his mother-in-law down the garbage disposal. But that's doing it the hard way. It would have been much easier to let George do it. At least George Valentine could have gotten Mama out of the house in one piece. Yeah, you never know when George will come in handy. Now, take Jerry Mace, for instance. He's the guy standing over there on the crowded railroad platform. He's waiting to catch a train home to Wifey. But I don't think he's going to make it. Come on, come on, give me my change. I'm trying to get the 515. Thanks. Oh, oh, excuse me. Pardon me, lady. Uh, Excuse me, that's my... All right, so it's not the 515. Well, look who wants to read the newspaper. (laughs) Who's following who, friend? You or me? Come on, loosen up. Why don't you... Hey, look out! Let go of my... And so instead of making the 515... Jerry Mace caught the Heavenly Express. Hope he had the right ticket, because it's a long ride with no return. Speaking of tickets, my friend here always has the right one for you. All aboard, Conductor. That was a streamlined spiel if I ever heard one. Now let's see if we can find out what caused Mr. Mace to do a jackknife onto the railroad tracks. It's Jerry Mace. Yeah, that's who it is, all right. Or was. One of my boys who went out to get the body said he thought he recognized him. Thought he was a friend of yours, Valentine. That's why I got you down here to my office so fast. Wait a minute, Lieutenant Johnson. Didn't he have any identification? Pockets were practically empty, Miss Brooks. Wallet, stuff in his side pocket gone. So he must have been slugged first, robbed, and then shoved in front of the train. That's right, Miss Brooks. Otherwise, it might look like he'd just fallen or maybe even jumped off that station platform to kill himself. Sure, he was a nice guy. But you don't have to beat around the barn to prove it was murder. What do you mean? He just got a new job a couple of months ago. Private investigator for the independent insurance company. For what? Yeah, you heard me. Was anything at all left in his pockets? Handkerchief, a couple of theater stubs. Things are over there. He used to carry a blue notebook, George, remember? That he'd write up his cases and... Jefferson theft case. Ah. I remember now, insurance bulletin. Independent insurance company. Yeah. Yeah, that's the insurance company in the case, all right. What are you talking about? Swedish match killing, 50000 taken. And before that, the Prairie Bank job. All one man, Prairie Dog, the boys call him. Clear it up, Lieutenant. Ah, the one man I've wanted to get more than anyone else in the world. Six unsolved crimes in the past two years. One of them a murder. Each time with the same guy. Dumb crimes. Clues all over the place. But we've never been able to catch him. What's that got to do with the independent... He's sloppy. Leaves cigarettes on the floor when he cracks a safe. Uses a funny black kind of Swedish safety match. Wears a pair of greasy gloves. Oh, we know lots of things, but we can't catch up. Lieutenant, I ask you what... His happened... last crime was another robbery murder. That insurance company a friend here worked for got hooked. Oh, so that might have been the case Jerry was working on. Prairie Pawn Shop. What, George? Hock your shirt, we'll loan you another. Yeah, it's a pawn ticket. Slipped down through a hole in his pocket, I guess, into the lining of his coat. No date on it. Yeah, well, me, I'm going to find out for sure what Jerry Mace was working on from the independent insurance company. It's after 6 o'clock, Lieutenant. I know their office will be closed, but in a little while I ought to be able to find somebody. What's the prairie? What is it? Didn't you ever hear it called that? Commercial Street, lower end, from front to third. You mean it's a district right here in town? Sure. In the daytime, it's industrial. Night's another matter. Shadows don't even trust the street lamps. Every man for himself and the devil has to pay admission. Yeah, nice place. That's where this prairie dog killer of yours comes from? Maybe, I don't know. That's why I want to check what Mace was doing. Okay. Come on, Angel, we're leaving too. Where are you going, Valentine? To hock my shirt and see what I get in exchange. Clock 
closed. George, the shop's closed. Yeah. Anyway, I don't understand why you're so interested. Angel, in... why would Jerry hawk anything? He's always had all the dough he needs. Oh, well... Unless he was interested in the place. Or unless it was somebody else's ticket he picked up for some reason. Or unless this place had some connection with the merchant. Sixty bucks a month. What in the... You want it or don't you? You tell it he's paid until the fifth. Sixty in advance and I won't take a check. If you don't want it, loiter somewhere else. I'm nervous about the plate glass. Want what, for heaven's sake? I own the building. What do you think? I'm out walking for my constitution? Hold it, hold it, brother. The hawk shop here is for rent? Yeah, tenant just closed up today. Name was Felix. Very substantial citizen. Always paid in advance. Can't you read the sign? Here. Here, yeah, George. Out of business. Door to let. Yeah, we didn't notice. All right, now you do. Think you want it? Let me know. Choice location. Yeah, sure. Well, George, at least this is one lead you can cross off your... What's the matter? I read you the sign. I'm reading between the cracks. What? Yeah, there's a light between the cracks. Premises aren't quite empty yet. Let's try one of the side street doors. Hello. Anybody here? He said the man's name was Felix, didn't he, George? Yeah. Hello, is anybody... So what are you doing here? So here, I guess. We're just... Shh, shh, shh. Come on, stop blowing your nose. He's talking to somebody else. Yeah. Uh, take it easy, take it easy. Just wanted to see you, that's all, Felix. Can't you read signs? Now go away, stranger, I'm busy. Try more the next block. I don't want to hawk anything. Oh, here, like a smoke? Smoke is cheaper than eating, you know. Keeps the stomach quiet. Beat it, I said... You want a handout? Stick the soup kitchens. I've got an inventory ah, to take. Ah, please, Felix. Listen. Uh, they tell me, uh, well, uh, somebody says you uh, loan money on uh, things. What do you think a hawk shop does? Bake donuts? Yeah, but I mean... Uh... Stranger, for the love... Oh. What have you got? Uh, wristwatch. Yeah, let me see it. Yeah, my grandfather gave it to me. Wonderful man. Uh, pretty valuable, don't you think? George. Yeah, Brooksy, watch this. Your grandfather, huh? Only, of course, it's a lady's wristwatch. I know. I guess he must have bought it for my grandmother, don't you think? Piece of junk. But all right, come out back here a second. Oh. Piece of junk or worth something sometimes, though, don't you think? You see, uh... Uh, your name Felix? Yes, that's right. What is this, open house? Well, we uh, want to see you, that's all. I know, everybody does. I'm out of business at the side door, too. If you gentlemen wish to discuss something, I'm... Uh... No, no, no. Give me that thing. And you stick around, tall boy. Sit down, sister. I'll only be a minute. Oh, really? I could come back on Give it to me, I said. Yeah. Get it here in the light. Uh-huh. Uh. Huh. <laughs> Look at that. Rhinestones aren't even real. Your grandfather got taken. Ah, shut up. Hello, Prairie Pawn Shop. Oh, hello, Sergeant. Well, the same to you. But look, Sergeant, I'm locking up my place, and I... Yeah, yeah, oh, okay, okay, let me have the description. Brown hair, skinny, short. <laughs> Look, I've got other things to do than watch for a stolen wristwatch, huh? Wait a minute, you say the guy sniffles? Hey! Hey, you! Stop him! Stop him! Stop that guy! Officer, grab him! Uh, let somebody else wear himself down. Well, you were a great help, tall boy. Let him go. All right, so who cares? Great neighborhood, huh? Classy type of people. Sister, what do you think of having a shop where guys like that come in? What's the matter? Want to use this phone, that's all. Well, if it's all the same to you, I... Just looking, that's all. What's the idea? Well, the phone's dead, isn't it? Kind of a convenient call from his friend the sergeant, would you say, Brooksy? I wondered why you brought that guy back in here. Look, Where's oh, the boy. button? Oh, yeah, here we are. Sure, step on the button, it rings. Not bad, not bad. Bum walks in, obviously trying to peddle a stolen watch. So you step on the bell and pretend to get a call from a police officer. And sergeant. then the bum runs away, leaving you the watch. <laughs> nice, clear profit. Hot as steel from a thief. Great neighborhood. Classy type people. <laughs> all right, all right. It's no skin off of your neck, is it? No. Uh, the prairie. Got to watch yourself in the clenchers in these parts, tourist. George, what did Lieutenant Johnson mean about Swedish matches? What? 
Look. And it's black, too. It was a safety match. Let me see that. Yeah. Now sit down, Buster. You and I are going to have a little no, talk. No, no, George. It was the other man, the sniffy one who dropped it. It was when he lit his cigarette coming in here. I remember. You sure? I'm positive. Come on. Headed up the alley, Valentine, but I cut him off. Chased him three blocks since Felix gave his yell, but I lost him. Hey, listen, there's another cop's whistle. They must have got him on the next street. Oh, no, they haven't. He cut down this side, then ducked in someplace just a second ago before... He's killing him! He's killing him! Through here, back of the barbershop. Yeah. You like to shave, huh? Well, I'll give you a shave. Close to the skin from down here. I'll show you coming into my shop There he is, he's got him. All right, Tony, you can get off his chest now. A lady I have under the machine. He come running into my shop. She could pull her hair out by the roots. He was just trying to find a way through the alley, I guess. Oh, I catch him. Tony, catch him. I, I chase him. First, he tried to fight Stop me. Stop waving that razor well, around. I could slice his ears. All right, all right, we said. Come on. On your feet, Sniffy. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Much obliged. Uh, Oblige, he says. Oh, hey, look, mister. I don't steal no watch. I, I didn't do nothing. Oh, assault, battery, trespassing, scaring to death a woman under the machine. Leave your shirt on, Tony. There's probably a reward for catching prairie dogs. What? What are you talking about? I'm getting out of here. Oh, no, you don't. Yeah, that's better. Yes, yeah, Sniffy, we'll forget the watch. You're under arrest for what's called suspicion of murder. <laughs> Boy Valentine's just full of good news, ain't he? He can toss more accusations around than a politician at a Fourth of July picnic. Now, do you really think little old Drizzle Puss is the nefarious prairie dog? I can't go for it. Get it? Gopher? Prairie dog? Swell. Well, while you kick it around, let's see what old groundhog here can unearth. Dig me, pal? <laughs> Say, do you remember when you were a kid how you liked to put pennies on the railroad track just to see what would happen when the choo-choo train ran over it? Well, there's a character around town called the Prairie Dog who has, uh, shall we say, modernized this little prank. Instead of using pennies, he started using people. And you know what happened? It worked. However, this does not set well with George Valentine, as he figures it will give the railroads a bad name if they have to start putting body catchers instead of cow catchers on the front of locomotives. So, he sets out to do something about it. So far, all he's been able to find is a little sniffle-nosed character who's long on alibis and short on handkerchiefs. Meanwhile, the cops are busy, too. Bless their little hearts. There, you see that? file we've drawn up on all the prairie dog cases. Let's see. That same kind of match has been found in every single one of them. Why, I wonder? Because the guy's dumb, Miss Brooks. Also, because he smokes. <laughs> Big logic. No, no, look there. Each one was a robbery that took some time. Makes sense? Yeah. And one, a safe was blown, and another, a combination was worked out. Well, is Sniffy a clever enough man to... Guy gets nervous. He smokes while he works. Grinds his cigarettes out into the floor. Here. Like that. Always the same way. Oh, the janitor will love you. You can't buy those matches in stores. Try it sometime. Sniffy's cigarette was the same brand, too. Cheap, but not too popular. I didn't see any greasy gloves on him. That friend of yours, Jerry Mace, who got killed, was definitely working on finding the prairie dog. His office said he was working on a hot lead today, but they didn't know what it was. You'll have to say more than that, Lieutenant. Before you'll buy that it was probably the guy he was after who killed him? Right? Mm-hmm. Well, Sniffy can't offer a single explanation as to where he was at the time of any one of the prairie dog crimes. Also, we've already turned up a witness who says he saw Sniffy on that station platform this evening where Mace was killed. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? How good a witness. Ah, that's why I didn't. For skeptics like Valentine, I'm waiting to get some more witnesses so I can... Come on, let's go down and see Sniffy, huh? All right, all right. If you don't believe me, watch him hammer the nails in his own coffin.
Now, uh, you understand I want to cooperate all I can, gentlemen. Just a simple misunderstanding. Oh, I, I don't blame you. I know how these things can happen. Why'd you steal that wristwatch you tried to sell to Felix Snuffy? Yeah, I, I'm glad you asked me, because I've been trying to explain to this other gentleman... Can it? Valentine, we can't find any record of it being stolen. Well, of course you can. See, my, uh, my grandfather... Canada said. Yeah, well, I just want you to understand. I, I, I have stolen things before. I, I've even been to jail for it. I certainly wouldn't do a thing like that again. Ah, so you've got a record, too, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they'll, they'll find it out sooner or later. I might as well be honest, don't you think? Yeah. Uh, just like that business of the station platform, it's... Uh, uh, suddenly occurred to me that I was there this evening. Oh, is that so? Yeah, it was just hard for me to remember. Oh, not that I was there when any murder took place, but, well, I find the inner urbans a very cheap place to sleep, and there are always plenty of newspapers to read, and so, you see, I, I generally am at almost every station in town every day. Uh, speaking of coffin nails, Johnson... Oh, would you like a cigarette? Excuse me. <laughs> of course. Hmm. Oh, Thanks. New brand, huh? New matches, too. I only want to be helpful, that's all. Hold it. Where'd you get these? Didn't they take his stuff away from him, Johnson, when they dressed him in the faded suit? Oh, I suppose one of the guys... Yeah, let's see. Yeah, get away from me. Don't... Those are mine. You can't... Uh... Sort of full pockets you wear, Buster. Cut it out, Snippy. Candy bar, package of gum. Well, none of that stuff is worth more than a few cents. Not, not any of it. The man's got to be comfortable, doesn't he? Where'd you get it? Yeah, even a cigar. A what? Hey, that's mine. That's one of my cigars. Uh, a very good cigar, Lieutenant. I, I meant to thank you. But how in the love of... Our friend here is a pickpocket, Johnson. Simple as that. The big suspect. Oh, uh, for peace. Of course, none of it's worth more than a few cents. You see, I've mended my ways. I wouldn't touch anything valuable. Telephone for you, Lieutenant. Yeah. Kill this guy for me, Valentine. Is it wrong for a man to like his little comfort? You uh, took this stuff from the guards, huh? from anybody who's been near you, right? Mm. Well, perhaps... Just like the uh, Swedish matches and special cigarettes you might have taken from anybody. Well, it's an embarrassing thing. But who? Come on, remember. Where'd you get those matches? I wish I knew. Might have been anybody, I guess. Anybody I bumped against. Oh, brother. Oh, Felix himself, I suppose. Come to think of it, a man like Felix is much more the criminal type. Shut up. What? Go on, go on. We're letting you out of here. You've given me enough bad ideas for one night. Felix isn't the prairie dog, I can tell you that right now. Well, I was only... Because Felix happens to be dead. Murdered. That's Felix, all right. How about it, Sergeant? Another prairie dog, sir. Fits all the patterns. Been hit over the head. Blown instrument, grease stains on the paperweight there, same as on the briefcases. Motive robbery, huh? Sure, sure. A pirate like this guy, Felix, must have made a pretty penny oh, in his look time. Oh, look, uh, don't stand there, sir. Huh? A couple of marks on the floor, that's all. Hey, where's this landlord? Did you find him? Yeah. Come in here, will you? Sure. Say, ain't this a tragedy, though? It shows you never can tell. His name's Calgary, George. I've been talking to him in the other room. But I didn't say much. How could I? Left Felix here before you people came. You people saw Never me. Never mind the alibi, friend. He says he was here helping Felix pack before, George. Pack? Yeah, going to Florida. Fly to Nassau. He made his pile. What do you mean? Going to retire. That's why he closed out his shop. Casting all the stuff he owned. Had a briefcase full of securities and stuff. And a roll of green goods in his suitcase that would have choked a horse. Who knew that Felix would be ripe for robbery right now? Jerry Mace, for one, George. Maybe that's why he was interested in Felix's place today. Yeah, I thought of that, but who else... Well, I guess most everybody in the neighborhood, friend, must have had some idea what was going on. Felix was a pirate. Wouldn't take much to figure he was worth knocking over. But knowing his exact schedule, the fact he'd be late in the shop tonight, be leaving from here and so on, well, maybe not so many. Uh Uh-huh. But more than just you, I suppose. Don't think I'd fall into that one, do you? I wasn't born yesterday, tourist. Lieutenant, come here. T- take a look. Tennis shoes. Huh? Uh, marks from them, I mean. The killer was wearing them. Uh, on the floor, you see? Same as in the last prairie dog case. Same type shoe. What are you trying to do? Rub it in? Every time we learn more and more about less and less. Clues, clues. I just thought you'd want to know the pattern is so... Cigarettes, sick. matches, greasy gloves. But have we got any fingerprints? No, no. 
I tell you, this prairie dog is one guy who wanted... Take it easy, Lieutenant. Valentine, he could be practically anybody in this entire city. He's killed two people today. And we haven't moved one inch closer toward catching him. Yeah, yeah, I get the general idea. Only then I changed it. Huh? I decided I've heard enough. And if I'm right about what I've heard, then it's all over but the shouting. Now, look, Master Mine. Suppose you and Caligari here just sit tight, and I'll be back later. Come on, Angel. Let's go to work on a prairie dog while he's still out in the open. George will use to dig up a prairie dog. Could be a shovel, maybe. I know what I'd use. A spade. Sam's spade. Not that I haven't confidence in Valentine, mind you. I do. Just like I have confidence in what my friend here has to say to you. Let's see what George and Brooksy have dug up on the prairie dog situation. Oh, that's them getting out of that car over there. I don't see him, George. I hope we made it in time. Yeah, well, he had to change his clothes again. If he's not here, I don't know where we'd ever find him. Yeah, coming down the other steps. Hello, Sniffy. Huh. Even, miss. Well, welcome to the fresh air. No, wait, I, I need your help. Oh, sure. Yeah, some things I'm pretty handy at. Well, it's just helping my memory, that's all. (laughs) Wish I had one. (laughs) You know, I walked into this case because a friend of mine was killed by the prairie dog. He was getting too close, I guess. In fact, from the location of that railroad platform, he was probably on his way to see Felix. He'd nosed around there before, so I... I guess Jerry had practically figured what the next crime was going to be. Is that so? Or maybe he'd figured how simple all of these prairie dog cases really are. Figured the clues. Figured why the clues were always the same. I, uh, don't get any of this, Misty. What I didn't figure until now was what it was I walked into myself this evening. When I walked into Felix's place. That's where the memory comes in. Yes, we walked in by the side door, and then we heard Felix moving around, and he spoke, and we thought he was speaking to us. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, I know. I I was there. You you see, I had this watch of my grandfather. Yeah, yeah, that's right. uh, But I'm trying to remember what it sounded like when you and Felix walked into the back room. Remember, two of you coming into the back room, but only one pair of footsteps. His. I don't get it. And I remember the same thing when he pretended to get that phone call and you ran. He didn't make any noise. I don't get it. I suppose you dragged that watch in just so he'd invite you to the back room, where people would be less likely to see when you robbed and killed him. I don't get it. Why don't you say something different? What we walked in on was murder. That's the real reason you ran. Look, you're worse than that lieutenant. I didn't kill Felix, remember? I was in jail. You weren't in jail when Jerry Mace was killed. Huh? You don't understand why the same clues were always left by the prairie dog? Of course not. You're dumb like everybody else, so it never occurs to you those clues, the cigarettes ground out, the special matches, the greasy glove marks, the tennis shoes, were only to make people think in terms of one man. But suppose the prairie dog is two men working together. How to fool people. Not bad. Each would have an alibi one time or another. All sorts of neat ramifications. Huh. That's a pretty word. And you're trying to make something against me just because you think I was wearing tennis shoes. Well, you don't make sense. Look. That's leather. Best pair in the city, don't. And don't the rest of your memory work? Felix gave a yell. The cops started after me. I've been in jail ever since. This is the same pair I got dragged in with. No spares in my pocket, see? That's why I'm so sure it's you. You've changed shoes. When? When could I change my shoes? What you had to change them. Your murder of Felix was interrupted by us, and there you were with all the evidence ready for planting. Well, you could save yourself on the matches and cigarettes by that little pickpocket exhibition in jail. But if you'd been caught with the shoes on, they would have hung you. So, I wish the pair of hard ones out of the air, mister, mister. When? When could I have? So simple it hurts, Buster. Because there's only one person who could be your partner. Only one person you could have given the evidence to so he could go ahead and kill Felix and get you off the hook as well as collect the loot. Only one person you could have run to when you knew the cops had you surrounded and would nab you any second. The guy who caught you. That barber, Tony. Yeah? Is that so? (laughs) 
It's the only way it could work, Buster. Just like the only way Jerry Mace could have had his pockets emptied before he was shoved in front of that train. He couldn't have been slugged in public and then rolled and then pushed, could he? George, that's right. Yeah, Angel, we missed that before. His outside pockets were empty. In the crowd, the only way that could have happened was if a pickpocket did it before Jerry even knew he was there. So you hung yourself on that one, Buster, showing off your ability. Now, come on. We're going to go see the barber about a two-headed hair. Look out, George, he's... Thanks for giving me an excuse, Buster. <laughs> So it was sniffles after all. Say, I know a good way to save the state some money. Instead of sending him to the chair, thereby using up a lot of electricity, just put Junior in a cell with a box of paper handkerchiefs and let him blow himself to death. Oh, well, it's a dog's life at best. So before they put me back in the pound, let me say that Robert Bailey played George Valentine with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. The story was by David Victor and Jackson Gillis, and that uh, bang in the background was that old hound dog, Eddie Donstetter. I hope you'll save some time for another visit with Valentine when you will again hear what happens when you let George do it. (laughs) 